Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name's David. It's great to meet you. In today's video, I wanted to create lots and lots of fun Halloween DIYs. I think I did a total of 12 or 13 for you. I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as possible because I know not everyone likes to sit and watch YouTube videos. They just wanna get the idea and run with it. So let's get started. categories for Halloween DIYs. I have a couple that are like thrifted or upcycled decor, like stuff that you have laying around the house, maybe from last year's decor and you want to upgrade it or something like that. I also have a few upgraded pieces that are from Target. It's just things you could grab there real quick and kind of spruce up so it looks a little bit more expensive looking, such as this cute little jack-o'-lantern right over here. I did do a tutorial on how to create this look in a video all by itself. I will link that down below in the description box in case you want to check it out. But I briefly go over it in this video how to get this look. Look, this terracotta pottery barn look it's so pretty it looks super expensive and this is just a plastic jack-o-lantern that I got on clearance for like four dollars anyways I also have another category of Dollar Tree stuff I used to do lots of Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs so I'm excited to do a few in this video all right that's enough rambling let's get to it so I have this little bat dish this little pumpkin card holder and this little haunted house thing I got from Dollar Tree a couple years ago. Now this stuff I haven't really been using too much for my Halloween decor and I wanted to spruce it up so I could use it this year. I spray painted everything in matte black primer. Let's go ahead and get started with this haunted house. I just removed the little wooden piece that was on the bottom, just popped it right off. The next thing I had was this picture from Dollar General. It was on clearance, so I only paid $3.50 for it. I thought it was a pretty good size. I'm going to go ahead and paint over this so I can make a spooky Halloween scene. So I started with some white paint, some blue, and some red, and I went ahead and just mixed all these together right onto the canvas. I was trying to go for a dark, like midnight, kind of spooky look. So I wanted like this deep purpley color, so I thought the red and blue mixed together would create a really fun deep purple. I added some black into the corners to kind of darken up the scene. And originally I was not going to stain the wood, but I had to because I got paint all over the inside. So I just took some brown antique wax and I just went over all the wood. So now that my base is ready, I just took a little bit of white and I dipped my brush into it and I just dabbed it all over the top portion of this painting to create some soft clouds and then I wanted to create a moon so I added in a little bit of this gold color in with the white just to create like kind of a yellowish but more of a dingy off white I guess I don't I don't know you'll see it here in a second And then I thought the black house was looking a little bit just too solid, so I added in a little bit of this color at the bottom, and I kind of went upwards with it, almost like it was like grass, like overgrown grass at this haunted house. Once I got the house in place where I wanted it, I kind of marked out where I would be painting for the windows, because I wanted those to be, you know, like light is coming out of the window. So I just used that same color combination with the metallic gold mixed with the white for the lights. And then I just hot glued the house in place and then I just took some my fingernail and my scissors as well to create these lines for the windows. I also added in a little bat in the middle window. For the next little thing that we had spray painted black earlier is that little pumpkin card holder. I just took this brass metallic spray paint and I spritzed it over the black to make it look more vintage. And then I just placed a cute little card inside of this and that completes this.
Now moving into the Target upgrades. Now this is originally from Target. However, I did get it at a discount store, so I only paid $1.50 for the pumpkin. I just went ahead and used my flat black primer. I absolutely love this primer, you guys, if you cannot tell. So I just sprayed the whole thing with this, and honestly, you could just leave it matte black, and it looks so chic. It just looks so expensive. I don't know what it is about it. But I wanted to take it to a next level type situation. You guys know I love my texture and I love doing stone pots and stuff like that on my channel. So I wanted to create a matte black terracotta. I know I just did like a terracotta jack-o'-lantern on my channel in a couple videos back. And again, I will link that video down in the description box in case you missed it. But Pottery Barn came out with these beautiful terracotta pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns, I should say, and they sold out. Everyone was, like, going crazy over them, and they're all over the internet. They're so, so pretty, and to get, like, a similar look, you just paint whatever you want to paint, like, whatever color. A lot of people were doing, like, this orange color, and then they're taking, like, baking soda and mixing it in with the paint, but there's so many different ways you could go about it. So for this one, I just mixed a little bit of baking soda with some white paint, and I just dabbed it all over the matte black pumpkin and smeared it in and then like wiped it off. And that's kind of what gave me this really neat effect. So I wanted to do the same thing with this turquoise one. Again, I got this from that same discount store for around like $4, I believe, for this one, which is pretty good because they're going for around $10 at most of the big box stores. So for this one, instead of doing like the black color we just did, I'm trying to do that terracotta one. I already made one of these, like I said, in another video, but this one I just wanted to create like a darker version. This next project is really fun. It's super easy to do. Just be careful because we're using a knife for this project. So pick out some fun colored candles from Hobby Lobby. Unwrap them and then we're just going to slice into this them. This one has kind of a sparkle to it and I love that. I think that is so cool and I hope once I start carving into it that it'll still look the same. So just take the knife and you're going to just slice into the candle like this. And we're going to do this in small sections because we want this to resemble a crystal. I even went ahead and did the tip of the candle just right here on the edge and I just shaped this out so it would look more like a crystal.
you may notice I will take my thumb and just rub it over the edges to smooth out the candle wax. And then once I got close enough to the other side, I just flip the candle around and I'll do the bottom half of it. Once I'm completed with the whole candle, I just go back over it with my whole hand to smooth out any imperfections. And this is what the candle will look like when it's completely done. And overall, I think the piece looks really expensive. I think they look at least $12 per candle. And you can save all of this to make another candle. And this candle here, I was hoping that that shimmer would still be there, but as soon as I cut into it, it like took off a film or something that was on the candle, as you can see here. But that's fine with me. I think that the gray color kind of oh, wow. goes with the Halloween theme anyway. And by the way, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. Just take the knife and carefully slice into it section by section. I'm not really counting how many I'm doing. I'm just going about it very randomly. And I think the more random it is, the better it looks. It kind of looks like more spooky in my opinion. I'm loving these. They look so cool. Okay, one more candle. And this one's a taper Third candle. So I guess we'll see how this one turns out. Ooh, I don't think I like this already. It's weird. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to continue this one because it's not fully yellow. I'm going to do a couple more off camera and then show you the results of my candle. I got this broom. I found it from, oh, I got this broom from Target. There was no price tag on it. So the cashier gave it to me for $1.50. And I really liked this part, but I just thought the handle looks a little, I don't know, it looks a little weak compared to this section. So I wanted to upgrade the handle. So what I'm gonna do is actually remove it and then add a new handle in here. I went to Dollar Tree and I got a plunger. So I'm just gonna remove this part of the plunger and obviously the tag. Oh, the wire was through this right here. We're gonna insert the new broomstick. That's gonna look so much better. I think it looks so much better with this handle. Just so it's not moving around a whole bunch, I might put a little bit of hot glue down in here so it doesn't like fall off or anything. I'm just gonna go in and stain the pole. And I'm using the color Special Walnut by Minwax. Probably should have stained it before attaching it, but that's fine. Need to let it dry, but I think this broom definitely got an upgrade. It looks so good. Let me show you. So now with this piece, I'm just going to go ahead and make another broom. I'm going to reuse this. And I have this. I just cut from these florals I got from Hobby Lobby, I do believe. And they were just too long, so I just cut them down. And I think this looks perfect for making a little broom. Right now I have a little stretchy band over it. And I have some silver wire, so let's just... Go ahead and do this. We'll just put the thing right through the hole, just how they had it. Kind of like double up like this. I need it all to be down.
I think I'm gonna take some more wire around just this part. I'm debating if I want to spread this out like this or, you know, just leave it. I feel like it should be spread out a little bit. So for this part, I'm actually just taking sections, just little like half inch sections, putting the wire around, I twist it around it and then have another section. I twist it around that section and I keep going until I reach the other side. In the broom, like somewhere in the middle here. And I'm pulling the wire pretty tight so that it kind of forms this broom shape. Okay, and then the end, I'll just twist this, tuck that in the back here. This is just a decorative broom anyway, so I'm not worried about little things like this on the back. This is going to be the back side of the broom. This will be the front side. So that's pretty much done. Made a whole br another broom here. I can just hang this up. I think I might stain this as well. A little bit more dirty looking. For this next project, we're going to be making these cute little mini brooms, and I'm making these four little goodie bags to give away to the kids, so I wanted to keep that in mind. I didn't want to make, like, prickly brooms or anything. I picked up a couple packages of these just to get the little sticks here, little rods from Dollar Tree, and then I also got this dog toy from Dollar Tree. That's pretty much it. That's what you're going to need. And you should be able to make about 30 of these brooms. So these are the new things that I bought. Cost me a total of $3.75 plus tax. And then also I have this already on hand. You can pick this up from Dollar Tree if you don't have it on hand already. But you will need some, some sort of string or twine to wrap around your broom. We're gonna need a glue gun. You'll need a bowl with some paint brushes and some water in the bowl. Also, I picked up some black paint, but if you already have black paint on hand, we're just gonna water down the black paint. I got some extra glue sticks and some scissors. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start untangling this dog toy here. So we'll just cut this out and we'll just untie the knot that's here. Oh wow, this is pretty tough. <laughs> I'm like, did they glue this in place? What in the world? So the dog toy is actually gonna be used to create our little broom texture at the end like of the broom instead of using actual sticks because I didn't want to have the kids poke themselves or whatever. That's kind of why I'm using this. I figured this, you can see right here, is kind of the effect it will give. This nice, like, almost like a mop. <laughs> it's going to be a mop instead of a broom. <laughs> All right, so since I'm cutting this up anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and take a chunk of, you know, whatever I'm using. Like, say this is how much I want my broom to be. Go ahead and just cut that off because I'm trying to undo this knot. <laughs> So here's a chunk we can use. Now hopefully I should be able to just push this section in and it will un come undone. There we go. That's what we want to have it come undone like this. So each section, there's three of them, you would just take that section and cut it into sections like this. And this is probably about the correct length, about, I'd say three and a half, four inches long. 
for each one. So like that would be one broom. So once you get all your sections cut out like this, we'll just kind of demonstrate here. We'll take one of our poles, or poles, you know, our sticks. So just take one like this and you're simply going to, so we'll just put the hot glue right in here, put our stick and wrap it around the stick. Then we'll just take our twine I'd say about two feet or so of the twine. And we're gonna just tie a knot around. Okay, I'm gonna do a double knot. Once you get your pieces on, then just take your twine and wrap it around several times, pretty tight. Put a little bit of hot glue right there. And then this part, you can either leave that or just trim this off, you know, so it looks a little bit better. And then you can go through and trim the broom so that it's, you know, it's shaped the way you want it to be. So there is the broom. And then you can just go ahead and paint it how you want or you can leave it like this if you prefer the multicolored look which it doesn't look bad like this but you can always go through and paint it so what I have is some watered down black paint just gonna squirt it on there and just go through and paint this and then I'm gonna go through and just Kind of make this handle part a bit more brown. And then there is the witch's broom. Just have to let this dry. I'm going to set this to the side so it can dry. But I'm going to go ahead and make a whole bunch of these. And put them in the kids' little treat bag. So they have a cute little witch's broom. So they're still drying. But I just wanted to show you. I did four different ones off camera. So this one's probably my favorite. Because of how I wrapped. I just wrapped really, really close right here with the string. And I think that it looks a bit more of a clean finish. Again, they're still drying, so they're a little damp. This one, I put some brown paint on the ends instead of black. Just wanted to show you these. We're going to move on to the next one. All right, so the next project, I'm going to show you how to turn this Dollar Tree skull into more of a realistic looking skull. So there's a side-by-side -side comparison. I just think the colors make this look a bit more like a dirty skull that was found out in the yard or something. I also went through and cut out some sections that kind of help make it look more realistic. I also was planning to put some cement down in the bottom of this to kind of hold it down so it feels a bit more heavy and solid. Let's get started. I'm going to show you what I did to get this kind of texture and look on the skull. So I have like a reference skull right here and in my reference skull the area right here is like cut out in the back so I kind of tried to mimic that with this as best as I could. First thing I did was take the sanding block and just try to sand these like lines right here. That will help it look more real. Now these are going to be out in the woods so really I don't need to go through and do all these little details but I'm just showing you if you wanted to go a little bit more. More realistic you know to get that realistic look as possible with the Dollar Tree skulls, then you definitely want to go through and make sure you sand these little teeny lines where the piece was compressed. If you can't sand it very well, you can always take an X-Acto knife and carefully just go through like this and slice little sections off right there that you just don't want that seam overall. Oops, that was not supposed to happen. Honestly, I'm not that worried about it. This is just for a prop anyways. You could go through like this with your knife if you can't sand it for some reason. That's gonna help make it look more realistic. The next thing you want to do is 
The skull that I have for the reference has these little holes right here, right here on the jaw. So I just wanted to replicate that and just poke the holes like right in this general area and just twist my X-Acto knife like this. And that will cut out just a little hole. So that looks pretty good to me. And then just try to replicate it on the same, under the same like section that you just did. So about right here. And just keep turning until all the plastic is out of that hole. Okay, it looks fine to me. So then we have our little holes here. Also, another little section you'd wanna add holes is, well, I don't really know if they're for sure, but the holes that are right here that are already on the skull, just go ahead and pop those out. The next section we're gonna cut out is on the side right above here. Kinda dips in a little bit, oops. And it's just a little slice, nothing too crazy. Kinda have to be careful with the X-Acto knife. So it's a little slice, I think I did that a little bit too deep, but I'll do it on the other side as well. So it's this section right here. Just a little teeny dip right there. And then you wanna kinda of flip it to its side here and we're poking up in to this groove. Kind of right under that cheekbone right there. And then I'm going back this way just a little bit and rounding it off and going back up. And then this part will be kind of rounded. And then you go down into this part of the jaw. And again, if you're confused on where I'm cutting, you just might have to open up like a skull reference on Google or something. I'm just cutting some sections out so it looks more realistic. Kind of like where it's dipping in right here. So I'm gonna just follow that area where it's dipped in and get as close as possible to the teeth. But you want to obviously leave some section there. It's about right in there. And then we'll go through and connect these. So that's kind of the section that I cut out. Now I know it does not look the same as this one over here, but when you look straight at it, I think it looks better with this little dip right here to make it look more realistic. And like this piece, this bone would be connected up here, but I can't obviously connect something there that wasn't there to begin with, so. <laughs> kind of stopping like right here at the, the bottom of the, the tooth right there. And again, we're just like kind of going with the flow, like this kind of rounds out back in here. And then it goes back up. And then over here is where it, you're cutting out. So it's kind of this weird shape and it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if it's for a prop, it's not that big of a deal. So I got my sides cut out. I wanna go through and make the teeth. I wanna cut those out as well. So this is like, you gotta be very careful, but you just take the X-Acto knife and poke in and all the way across to the other side of the tooth. And you could just keep doing that all the way down. And you wanna be careful not to stab your hand or finger. Then we wanna go all the way across the teeth to separate them. <gasps> Well, that tooth's gonna be broke. Add some character to your skull. All the teeth are cut out now, so they can move around a little bit, but I just wanna go through and like round off. So like there's this weird section right here. I'm just going to take the knife and, oops, just cut that out. And then you can go through like this and round off the teeth. 
if you want to get that like picky and you got to be careful not to you know break the whole little plastic piece off <gasps> oh I just stabbed myself in the finger so I guess is it worth cutting your finger off to get the teeth perfect I don't know it's your call <laughs> So I think I'm good with this. Just a couple little, if you at least round off just a couple of them, it'll be okay. I didn't round off every single one. Just a couple of them here to give a little bit of space and gap. All right, so now that our skull is prepped and it's ready to be painted, you can go through and spray this with a spray primer. You could do that, kind of rough up the surface a little bit and then spray it. I'm not gonna do all that because honestly the paint that I use, it, it stuck on here pretty well. And even if a little bit of it rubs off, you still have this base color that's really, really nice for like a bone color, this cream tone. I'm just gonna leave mine alone, but we're gonna get into the painting now. This gets pretty messy, so just i lay some paper towel down. All right, now for the fun part. So we're gonna go ahead and get our brushes, watered down paint, and we need a sponge. This is like what makes it really come to life. So really, I'm just gonna take some black paint to go over these creases, or you know, not the creases, but the little, we're going over the little cracks and things in the skull to bring out that detail. We don't wanna go over like this so much though. Kind of take that black right in here into the eye area those little holes we made okay and then you'll take some paper towel and just go through and wipe off the surface here it's okay if you have black everywhere it's not that big of a deal we really just want to keep that down in the crease right there and i still have the tag on i'm just going to paint over this the next thing I'm using is this metallic gold paint. I think this part is what makes it really look, I don't know, like this really fun old piece. So what I'm going to do is just flip this over. Now I have some paint right here I can just use out of the lid. And we'll just sponge it all over the skull. It looks a bit crazy right now, but it's fine. The next color I'm using right over top of that is this Antique Wax, and I got this from Michaels on clearance. It has a really nice brown tone that I really like. So I'm just gonna dip my sponge in the lid, and then we'll just kind of focus that around right in here. Again, putting the dark right here. If you want those teeth to pop out, just wipe off the paint. Right there on the teeth. And that will really just bring out the details on the skull. So I'm just dabbing it with a paper towel, help blend those colors in. I wanna go back over this section with just a little bit of black paint and help blend that out. So here's the skull. It looks a bit different when it's wet, but once it dries, it looks more like this, and I think it just turns out really, really nice. Very nice coloring on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a couple more, and I'm gonna use these for Halloween props for this year for Halloween. And again, I was saying earlier, you could totally put some cement, just put it down through this hole that's already there on the skull, or you could put it through the sides right here. Put some cement down in there so you have like just a little bit, maybe like half an inch. It'll lay like this. Half an inch of cement just sitting there. That will help weigh down your piece and make it feel more realistic, like more heavy.
The next project I'm going to do, I got these from Dollar Tree. They now have their Christmas ornaments out. I grabbed the white ones as well as the red ones here. Cardinal. Just going to take these off. These are great for turning into Halloween crows or even the ravens. Crows, ravens, whatever. So they come with this little wire on the feet, which is great for attaching them to like a branch or something like that in your home. So these are perfect. And they were $1.25 for two, which is really good. They are on the smaller side, as you can see the size of my hand, just so you have a size reference. But we're just going to paint these black. That way they're like a spooky vibe. Crows and the ravens and stuff, they sell out really quick on Amazon and Walmart and Michaels, like anywhere that sells the black birds. They just go so fast because everyone likes to decorate with those for Halloween. So we're just going to do this. Again, we'll have the black paint and a little bit of, of water. And we're just gonna water this black paint down a little bit. Here's my water. And we gotta get those little feet black as well. And I'm just going straight in with the black paint for the feet. I'm not watering it down because I want that to stick pretty well. A huge reason I water them down so I can spread the paint really far. The beak as well as plastic so you want to just use straight up paint when doing that. But see when I dip it in water it just spreads really easily over the fabric. I do think the white ones covered a little bit better than the red like this is falling apart so I would definitely use the white ones. I think the white ones look more like the type of bird like a raven or a crow anyway just because of their face and everything where these ones you could tell it's like more of a cardinal because of the but you can always take this off and i notice it's not covering as well as the white one did i can still see red everywhere so there's my birds i'm just gonna let these dry i might have to go back in and like glue the feet in a bit better because they're it keeps moving around <laughs> once it dries i might have to go back over it with one more coat Just when you thought it was over, we're still not done. So I wanted to show you how to make these apothecary jars. Everything's from Dollar Tree. I just found these chalkboard stickers and these little mini bottles and I thought they'd be perfect to make some mini little apothecary jars to kind of add to your, you know, your little Halloween decor area with your little apothecary section. So all you need to do is take one of the stickers and then just put it on the jar. It's pretty much that simple. However, I noticed these stickers weren't sticking to the glass very well. So I just went in with some tacky glue, again from Dollar Tree, and put that on the inside of that label sticker. So it would kind of adhere to the glass a bit better. I also used a little bit of hot glue so it would hold instantly. So now I'm just using this brown paint from Dollar Tree. It's called Deep Brown. And I'm just going to like stencil that all over the jar. And I'll probably just get this a little bit dirty looking too. The next thing I wanted to do was draw on the labels with this metallic marker. I thought it would just kind of give more of a spooky vibe, more of a vintage spooky vibe. I don't really know. You can use whatever you want. If you have a white chalkboard marker, that would work as well on these labels. On this one, I'm writing Danger Potion. So after you're done kind of decorating the bottles how you want, here is how you can display them. This 
next DIY is super simple. I just found this spider bowl from Dollar Tree and I wanted to just spray paint it with the flat black primer as well as kind of spritz over it with the brass spray paint that I have. You can use gold, brass, whatever you have on hand. Just give it a little bit of extra something so it looks a bit more vintage, you know. You guys know I love that vintage look. So I placed a candle inside of this and called it a day. I thought it looked so cute. All right, this next DIY is probably one of my favorites. I found these fun stickers from Dollar Tree. I just picked out some random things, you guys, and this came together so good. Also, I picked out some books as well from Dollar Tree, and I found this really cool coffin in the Halloween section. I just took this apart. I want to use the top half of this coffin. I'm going to start by spray painting with the flat black primer again. And I had this book already on hand, but like I said, you could pick one up from Dollar Tree. And I did this as a previous project in a previous video. So all you're gonna do is hot glue the top of the coffin down onto your book. And I think you guys know where this is going. We're gonna be making a really fun kind of witch's book or like a spell book or whatever. I just thought this was so fun. So I just painted the whole book in black. I didn't want it red anymore and I wanted it to kind of blend in obviously with the piece I just glued onto it. And I wasn't too like concerned about the red book anymore or whatever. Again, this was a previous project I had laying around so I wanted to just go ahead and upcycle it into some more fun Halloween decor pieces. Once it was all painted black, I just took a sponge and I dabbed that metallic gold paint all over the book. This really brought out some of that detail on that coffin. It just really brought the book to life. I also took the brown antique wax and I just dabbed that in the corners as well as the corners of the coffin to create like a dirty aged effect. I also wanted to create another book so I had this one as well on hand that was already previously painted for another project. And I just took those stickers that I found and I picked out the ones I wanted and I just hot glued those on the book because the sticker, they, just, they were not sticking, okay? You have to use hot glue. Then I just took some paint and I just dabbed it all over this book to kind of dirty it up and make it look more aged. I just wanted to show you guys you could do a lighter version as well as a dark version. I think they're fun either way. The contrast is really nice together. And don't forget to do the pages of the book just to age those as well. This next project is also very easy. I just grabbed some of these pumpkins I found from Dollar Tree. They're beautiful on their own, but I wanted to give them a mercury glass effect. So I just sprayed them with vinegar all over the place. Then I just took the spray paint. I used brass metallic again, sprayed that all over the pumpkin. Then I just sprayed it again with the vinegar spray. And then I spritzed it with some matte black spray paint and these turned out so beautiful. Here are the results.
Another fun last minute Halloween DIY, just go cut some beautiful florals from outside. I love these hydrangeas. I think they're so pretty because like some of them are turning red. Some of them are still in full bloom. I just think it's gorgeous put together like this. It looks very like Halloween to me. And I put them in a amber glass jar. This was a beer, I believe. Just a beer. I don't know. Just any amber glass jar you have, just pop them in there and instantly becomes a Halloween piece. I think it's so pretty. This was another broom that I actually made. I just cut the... I cut this from, I believe it's called zebra grass. It started to like sprout these little things. So I cut them off and paired them together. And this is like the stick from this. And I just wrapped some twine right here as well as on the other side. And it's like a little broom that you can display. Look at all of these brooms. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't wait for the kids to react. They're like so cute. Let me know if you make these in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and got lots of ideas. I have some more videos on the way, so stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!